Hello, in this video, we are going to see how to configure or create a stateful set object in Kubernetes. So the prerequisite for this video is to have some understanding of deployments or any other controller for that matter, some understanding of pods, and also some knowledge of services, other services like cluster IP and so on. So let's look at the manifest that we have created for the stateful set. So this is our stateful set. And the key thing is that it needs to have a service name associated with this. And that is that will be a headless service. So we need to create this headless service first before creating the stateful set. Let's look at the manifest for the headless service. So this is the uh, configuration for the headless service. It has got a name and the main point to note is that the cluster IP has to be none. It has to be explicitly specified because the headless service is a service that does not have an IP address associated with it. Let's go ahead and create the service. The service is now created. Let's check its status. It is there, but it does not have a cluster IP as expected. Let's also check the endpoints associated with this service. It doesn't have any because the stateful set or the pods in the stateful set are not created yet. So let's look at the configuration of the stateful set again. So this is also like any other controller, like a deployment or a replica set, most of the configuration is similar. But the difference is that we need to specify the service name and we are associating the service name with the service. Since the service is already existing, we could now go ahead and create the STS or the stateful set. It's created. So let's see if it is existing. Zero out of three is ready. One out of three is ready. We can also use the watch flag just like any other object. Two slash three, one more pending. Three slash three, all three are running right now. If we have to check the pods that we created, we could use the wide for more information, output format in wide so that it's, it's in tabular with, with the IPs of the pods as well. So we have got three IPs. Look, let's look at the names, which is the difference between this object, the STS object and any other controller. The STS object is going to create pods with some naming format. The first prefix is going to be the name of the STS object itself, which is nothing but STS hyphen Q train, followed by the ordinal index and it starts from number zero. So zero, one and two are nothing but the ordinal indexes which would be followed after the pod name. So even if we delete one of the pod, let's say we have to delete the first pod by giving the delete pod command, the first pod would get deleted for sure, but there's going to be another pod with the same name. So we see that kubeprint zero is created again, the container is getting created. So it is running now, but now with a different IP. So even if the IPs are gonna change, the name is not gonna change. Since the name is not gonna change, the DNS name associated with the pod is also not going to change. So that's why we say the STS object gives a sticky identity to the pod with the help of some standard names. So the DNS names are going to be stable. Now, let's try to get into one of the parts. Cube train zero, yeah, we'll get into the first part. So there was a typo. And I have to give bash, because I need to get it to the bash prompt. Okay, so we are in the first pod. And if I have to NS lookup, so NS lookup is the utility that is used to check DNS lookups. But since we have the Apache image, that image does not have NS lookup by default in it. And if we have to 
install this utility, we have to update the image first. And after updating, we have to install the DNS utilities image. I mean the, the utility software, the package. Yeah, this is also getting installed right now. Now let's try to run NS lookup again. This time it works. So we know that we know the pod names now because it was easy to remember. If we have to check the IP address of the first pod, STS hyphen cube train hyphen zero, which is nothing but the same pod which we are logged into right now, it would give its IP address. It would give, it would return its IP address, which is nothing but uh, 1064.0.10. Let's check if it is correct or not. Or, yeah, no, 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 it is not correct. This is the server address. It is not the, yeah, this is the server address. So let me try to give the correct name, naming format. It is not just the name. We have to na give the name followed by the service. So cube train hyphen zero, and the service name is SVC hyphen HL hyphen cube train. Yeah, now we got it. So this is what it is. 1056.164 is the pod's IP, and this is its complete DNS name, or sometimes we can also call it as a fully qualified name. So it's the complete domain, and this is the shorter alias. STS, this is the shorter alias, which is nothing but the pod name with a dot, and then the service name. And this works only when we use stateful set. Similarly, if you wanted to check the DNS name of the DNS, uh, I mean the IP of the second pod, we could check this one, kubetrain dot one uh, hyphen one point SVC hyphen HL hyphen cube train. This time we would get a different IP because the IP is changing. The IP is different for the second pod and we also get its complete uh, uh, DNS address. This is the complete DNS address and this, this is the shorter form of it. So that's how the DNS names and the pod names are going to be stable when we create a stateful set. Let's go ahead and do the cleanup. STS, I can give hyphen hyphen all to keep it simple to delete all the stateful sets, but we know that there is only one. The stateful set is deleted and the pods within the stateful set will also be deleted. Let's also go ahead and delete the services that we created. So the services are deleted. Okay, so just a recap, we saw how to create a stateful set. We saw the difference between stateful set and other controllers that we have created so far. We saw how to attach a headless service to the stateful set. And we had also seen the, st the uh, sticky property of stateful set in maintaining the correct pod names, stable pod names and stable DNS names. And we also performed NS lookup by getting into one of the pods. And finally, we deleted the stateful set as well as the service and did a cleanup there. Hope this video was helpful and we thank you for watching it.